Lewis. So thanks for being on the show on Filmspiration once again. Everyone out there in Filmspiration land, if you haven't done so, please hit subscribe and also ring that ring that little bell. Hit that little bell. That way you're notified <laughs> next time I make a new video. Uh, too much coffee this morning. I gotta <laughs> say. Mucho nescafe. But yeah, so so Evelyn, talk to me about you know what production has been like uh, for the Bodega Makeover Show mm -hmm. ever since COVID nineteen because man that that put the brakes on basically life yeah. in general, especially production life. So what's it been like? Um, how are you guys moving forward? So we, again, started slow. Um, and we knew that we wasn't going to do anything for a while um, until things started dying down. Safety is first, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a great team. Um, Anawa Street Productions, they're uh, a production company uh, uh, young, young, young guys, uh, and very, very talented. So I just kept at it with the script, just refining it and coming up with some new ideas. Um, and just staying busy pretty much. <laughs> yeah. But you know, now we're, now that we're starting production, we, you know, we also have to talk about like the safety and keeping it small yeah. uh, and making sure that, uh, we're always wearing masks and that's going to be another challenge. Like people are talking like, how are we going to hear what they're saying? So those are the little things that are the little challenges that we need to, uh, to uh, you know, reconsider or just like, okay, maybe, you know, not saying too much dialogue yeah. <laughs> or doing this way. This is very, very much pivoting um, depending on like what scene we're doing. But a lot, a lot can still be done with um, the TV and film being so visual. And I mean, you know, as they say, like, if you turn the audio down and the story can still be communicated, then you're telling a good story, all of that jazz, right? So a lot can still be done. I mean, uh, you know, in, in my case, for example, I was doing film inspiration pre-pandemic and mm -hmm. actually, uh, you know, I was forced into Zoom and it was actually a good thing for for film inspiration because I'm able to talk to folks now. And so there's, there have you seen any blessings in disguise come from the pandemic and how, how it's forced you guys to operate differently? You know, as far as like storytelling or as far as like just the Bodega project? Both, both in, in any aspect. Um, not really. No. <laughs> well, have you, have you been um, more, more active? I mean, since we've all been home more often, yeah. and more active online, really, pushing the, uh, the, the Bodega Makeover show out there? Um, yeah, I mean, again, you know, that, that gave me some time to really, again, look at the story, uh, revise it, uh, make it current, um, and just staying up with the news, finding out how Bodegas are going, um, you know, with the healthy options, um, also with farms, to, you know, when, when they're gonna start back up, um, because it all connects, you know, so anything that connects with the bodega, health and well and fitness, you know, uh, I'm, I'm looking to see how I can incorporate that within the story. Ellie, uh, do you keep track of, or I'm sorry, not track, do you keep contact with a lot of bodega owners to see like, hey, how are you guys doing? Or, mm -hmm. you know, you know, in, in these times, what do you guys need? Because as we were um, talking about in a previous episode, to my surprise, a lot of bodegas are still going. And a lot of bodegas, you know, versus large corporations that have shut their doors. Yeah, for sure. I, I know that um, I had a conversation with Vita Coco, um, the brand, and they were really uh, helpful. And, you know, they were like, hey, we started at Bodegas. So we want to support them as much as we can. Uh, what, what are the needs? And I said, well, refrigerators. Yeah. <laughs> refrigerators are needed. Um, so we're, we're still um, creating our list of 15 bodegas that will be, will be receiving um, Vita Coco brands and um, refrigerators. Awesome. Yeah. Um, there's, there's so many, I'm, I'm always interested to, it, it's become kind of a, a, a point of interest to me with regards to like how a lot of my friends in the content creation game, you know, if, if they move forward or, or how they've moved forward or how they've kept up their skills, especially during COVID-19. And so um, that's, that's why I asked that question because I've seen some people 
go stagnant, unfortunately. And I've seen other people get that much more creative. Um, like last weekend, I got to interview a, a small theater troupe out of the LA area that nice. did um, Arthur Miller's A View from the Bridge. And okay. they did this all on Zoom. And I was like, damn, I got to talk to you guys. Yeah, they got creative on Zoom. They're like, we're not doing our thing. Like, our feet, you know what I mean? So that's, that's what I find fascinating is, you know, where, where content creators are in this day and age with regards to COVID-19. Um, yeah. you, you said you've been, um, you kept at developing scripts, right? How important is it to stay just active as a creative person in, on, on the development side? Um, I, I think that, um, you know, active can be, can be, um, it means different to many different people. Um, I think for me it was like the rest time. Cause sometimes if you're on a content all the time, you, you, you lose the story yeah. or, you know, if you're watching the news, it feels like the news is narrating your story. You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think oh, what's important, uh, is not to be active and authentic with your voice, but also taking a break. Yeah. I think that mental break uh, is important. Um, I mean, there were times where I didn't even talk about Bodega Mako for two weeks, you know? Um, I watch TV shows and movies that is not even on my radar <laughs> just to get that, ref, you know, ref, refresh, refreshing in your mind. Yeah. So when you go back to your script, you're like, okay, now I'm, I'm good, you know? But if you're too much in it, I just think that uh, it, it, um, it's not good for the storyline. Um, so I think being active is first is taking care of yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then second, taking a break when you're like, you're stuck, you know? Uh, and then go back into into your script as a new person. Um, I think those, those things are were important to me when I were talking about being active. That's cool because you know what? It, from, from what I'm hearing from you, um, it's actually both, it's, it, it ebbs and flows with regards to like stepping away and letting your mind and your thoughts rest by diving into other content mm -hmm. and then stepping back to your thing with that time, with the time that we all, the extra time that we all have right now to then step back into it fresh. So it's not, it's not one or the other, it's about how you, like how you're harnessing it, right? Like time. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing too, like be, be careful of like, you know, not, listening to too much negative news because yeah. again that can translate into your script and then when you're reading it back like wait i i didn't mean to <laughs> where am i going with this you know yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, cool. yeah. evelyn is there anything else you want to add with regards to like how covid 19 has affected um you the production mm -hmm. um just content creation in general that something more you want to put up um, not really. I mean, I think COVID-19, um, you know, it's still, it's, it's going to be around for a little, for a bit. I think people need to do the right thing. Um, you know, my, my aunt in DR, she, she passed away, uh, COVID-19. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. 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 Um, so I think that, um, you know, we just, we just need to sort of adjust, um, and just continue, you know, um, playing it safe. Well, thank you very much, Evelyn. I appreciate it. And let's go ahead and close out on this episode. Um, and you know what I didn't do last time? Exactly what I told you. I'm a master of bringing things up and then not doing them. So I'm going to put my little marker here. Oh, yeah, yeah Mark. Yeah, I totally forgot about <laughs> that. that other bo other, other box? Oh, yeah, the other box. That's a great brand, by the way. Like, if you want to protect your phone. Oh. Um, it's just a phone cover right there from my phone. Cute. Um, I like it. All right, cool. So that's my little marker for editing. Uh, item number three. Okay, this is one that I always like to dive into. Um, what is that? Oh, Afro Latinos. That well, let's let's go ahead and get to that one afterwards. But this um, why episodic versus standalone, and you know, Amazon oh. and oh yeah yeah you know, yeah yeah. Because um, so so anyway, uh, yeah. Let me go ahead and. Uh, Take us in there. I'll jump in with the intro and then we'll jump right into that one. So um, everyone got a treat for you, Evelyn Brito from the Bodega Makeover Show. And um, thank you so much. If you haven't done so, please hit subscribe and also 
hit that little bell that way you're notified next time we make a new video so evelyn um talk to me about the bodega makeover show with regards to why you chose to do something episodic versus a standalone piece of content like you know a, a short film or a documentary um right. And because and, and I'll give you my thoughts as to like you know why episodic I think it's it's a very big part of our world today. Mm -hmm. yeah for sure I um I decided to do episodic because I just fell in love with uh, extreme home edition um, and how they sort of changed people's life and I wanted to see more of that like if it was a documentary or if it was a standalone I think it would have just been boring like <laughs> this this the topic is so like universal like like other people will will use those services so I think like uh, with Bodega, I think there's so many stories that we want to tell. We just don't want to stop in Boston, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's why I decided to do an episodic. I think from a content consumption, production and consumption aspect, Evelyn, um, I mean, let, let's, let's be beyond honest. We, you know, every major corporation has already started its own app. It has its own platform, its own production company. Ironically enough, I got, I got my little vest back here that says Telemundo back there because I started yeah. Telemundo back in 03. When Telemundo did something kind of different, they, they um, from what I understand, Univision had all the contracts with Televisa mm -hmm. to get all of like the really high-end novelas, right? So Telemundo to compete with that basically started producing their own novelas and that was a very new concept back in like 03 and so I thought I thought that that was really interesting it's something I'll always remember um because I got to be a part of Telemundo when that was happening but every every major company now again they, they've got they've got their own platform their own production company etc so a lot of people figured out hey we can make our own stuff and so very much like tv like oh my god novelas mm -hmm. right it's about the continuity yes. about of i mean and and even with even with you know one of my shows that i dove into though i didn't i'm not crazy about the ending it's another topic game of thrones um <laughs> even even as amazing as each one of those one hour episodes was it mm -hmm. was a small piece of a much bigger ongoing episodic mm -hmm. story and right. so i mean that's just I think that that's just the world that we live in now mm -hmm. where people are hungry for story. The stories better be good because people aren't, you know, people are going to be able to tell like when a story sucks or when it's just boring or, you know, like instinctively, I think people are able to tell. Yeah. But, content, I mean, content is king. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big time, man. Yeah. And, and one of the things I want that, that jumped out at what you just said, or that just jumped out at me of what you just said previously was, um the the bodega um beyond it being it's they're not just stores mm -hmm. there are so many stories within those stores imagine all the stories that can be told um if somebody you know like yourself goes in there to look for those stories you know like hey tell me about how this how the family got started or you know what i mean like there's tons right. of stories to dig up yeah, for sure. And I think you too, it's a sense of like starting a movement, you mm -hmm. know, not just within, you know, Boston wall, <laughs> Boston wall, <laughs> yeah. uh, where, you know, we, we branch out and we uh, tell those stories. So it, it all sort of like giving the community their power back and say, create their movement by using bodegas and saying, mm -hmm. no, yeah, you know, this, this community does deserve uh, healthy options. Stories, I think, when, you know, like, I think, personally, when I hear somebody's story, right, mm -hmm. and, you know, who they are and struggles that they've had to go through and this and that, and you hear, you hear the story behind the person or the story behind maybe an organization or a bodega, mm -hmm. that then, honestly, next time I, I, see that person or that organization i think of them a little differently so there's a different connection that comes through the power of stories behind the thing in this case bodegas right right yeah yeah for sure i think that um you know if you dive deep into into the stories like you said you know you get a sense of like we're all connected you know um the dominican bodega is not as as different as as a Mexican bodega you know they struggle the same to keep their businesses up 
<clears throat> they may have the same customers, but <laughs> just on the side of the world. <laughs> so, you know, I think that there's a, there's a connection. And, and also thinking, like, what connects us all is food, yeah. right? Food connects us all. So I think that's also an important aspect of this show. It's just like, you know, a place where all, not only, you know, Latinos, because Latinos, you know, every Latino knows what a bodega is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't care if you're in Alaska, you know what the corner store is. Yeah. Um, so I think that it, it connects us. And um, with, with regards to, uh, like, for example, even, even the food, like, mm -hmm. um, as you were mentioning in, in one of our previous episodes, like maybe some bodegas can have classes on how to, how to make, um, healthy smoothies. Yeah. You know, like even, even that, like the stories behind the food, how it's prepared, those can be entire episodes right there too, because you can go in so many different directions. If you just, if you just, uh, look at, um, all of these different specific items as an avenue of a story, uh, that get you to say like, okay, there's a story here. Let's tell that story. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. My classic example, Game of Thrones, right? Like, so my wife's telling me like, hey, did you know that they're gonna they're gonna do a spinoff? And I'm like, of course they're gonna do a spinoff story. There, after like, what was it like seven, eight years of Game of Thrones? There are ridiculous amounts of like side stories that mm -hmm. can come off of the main story. And I think that's brilliant because I, that's, that's going to go on like the Star Wars saga, which is what now, like three, like, you know, four decades. Right. Um, and, and so you can take, you can take so many stories from so many different aspects. And I admire that. Um, you know, some, sometimes when, um, God, like I, was it on Netflix? I saw uh, a six part series on tacos in Mexico. <laughs> I think I've seen that. Did you see it? Did you see it? I think I've seen something like that with tacos. And and um, so it was different different types of tacos, and you know, from you know Mexico City to Northern Mexico, Central Mexico, very fascinating. Like the 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 tacos uh, we're all familiar with, like the, the different types, right? Mm -hmm. But the stories behind the tacos and how each of them originated, like the type of carne from each region, how it's. Um, how it's treated like that was beyond fat and i'm just like damn somebody made six episodes six amazing episodes out of tacos and so that's what i'm just fascinated by the ability to extract story from and and the effect that that has yeah yeah for sure i need to i need to I need put that on my watch list <laughs> that's but that, that goes back to you no, what, what you said i i think it's called um cronica del taco or cronica de un taco um, yeah. I, I highly recommend it and you will get hungry, but really? going back to your point, like, you know, I, I see a lot of foods from, from a lot of other uh, countries. Mm -hmm. I'll be very honest with you, Evelyn. I don't know what they are half the time and they look good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 You know, it's let me good be to be curious. It's good to be curious. Like that's the whole, that's the whole point of, you know, uh, putting healthy options in bodegas. Yeah. Because that's just like that curiosity, like, well, okay, what do I, what else can I do with this, you know, mm -hmm. eggplant? <laughs> yeah. You know, some, somebody out there is going to have an idea that you've never thought of. And so that's, that's a whole show. That's a whole episode. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I, I think, um, I think episodic, I mean, you know, there's, just, there, there are a lot of benefits if you know how to, if you know how to um, look for the story and expand upon the story and also do efficiently quickly um that doesn't mean that doesn't mean low quality you know you want to put together like a good story yeah, um but i i think that's just the world that we live in now and so you know congratulations to you and thank you so much for being the first person who's doing something episodic um to ever talk to me because i've i've ran my mouth about like my theories and, you know like i'm not <laughs> you know but but you're the first person I get to talk to who's doing something um, episodic. So kudos to you and your team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cool. Evelyn, anything else you want to add with regards to episodic? And, you know, you may, do you encourage other people to, you know, think about episodic content? I mean, again, it depends on what they they want to do. Mm -hmm. But sure. I mean, I love watching episodics. If it's interesting, if it's something that, uh, you know, uh, has that multi-layer, 
we talked about and yeah. also has like a mission, you know, movement behind it. I definitely will watch it for sure. <laughs> yeah. And then um, also a lot of people say, well, you know, it's really hard to get on Netflix or Amazon from what I understand is a little bit easier to, to get up. Yeah. Talk to me about your, um, your, your experience with um, getting on Amazon if you'd like, mm -hmm. or, you know, um, because I've looked into it and it, it's definitely easier for when I understand the Netflix. Um, but it, it doesn't even have to be one of the major platforms because we have this thing called YouTube and Facebook that's accessible to everyone, right? Yeah, I think it's so much easier now. I think that you don't have to wait for Hollywood. Or you don't have to wait for Netflix to pick you up or anything like that. I think it's just like you can get it, like you put it in any platform. You can put it on Vimeo. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I decided to do Amazon because um, I'm looking sort of at a bigger picture mm -hmm. uh, and how Amazon can be connected to small businesses. So it's sort of like a mission in my back of my head that I'm planning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, it, it was actually not that um, difficult to get it on Amazon. They do have a platform for independent filmmakers, but to the process, it, it's very tedious. Um, you know, this is a lot of technical stuff that you have to do. You have to make sure that your pictures or your, you know, your um, it's in the right measurement. If not size, if not, they just not gonna accept it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So a lot of that I, I had to learn myself. Um, but I decided to do Amazon because I feel like it's a family platform uh, and there's a there's an opportunity for me to sort of looking at the big picture how Amazon could potentially be a supporter for bodegas. So who knows? I, I, I applaud Amazon for for um, letting con I mean I've had my like you know in all the time as I've as I'm editing my feature film and I'm on the back end of that um you know like what platform am i going to put it on and so amazon honestly you know on top of on top of facebook and youtube amazon is probably the one platform that i really have my eye on netflix it's like i, I can't compete with eddie murphy you know what i mean but i can still get my stuff out there and so um kudos to amazon for being as big a platform as they are but still being more accessible than a netflix from what yeah I yeah you know, so, and then I'm pretty sure like once, once the content is up there, I mean, it's still up to you to, um, to promote it, to push it out there, to drive traffic to it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, that's, that's another, uh, <laughs> many, many hats that as filmmakers, you know, that we, we do is we do all the marketing and it's a growing process, you know, mm -hmm. it's a growing process for me. Um, just going on Amazon and finding, I'm not very technical, but <laughs> it forces me to actually, uh, do it. Um, but I think it's a great platform for if somebody who's doing an episodic or even a standalone uh, film that you want um, to generate a little bit of cash, yeah. you know, and also and a great platform. Why not? And, and Amazon, from what I understand, they pay per like X amount of cents per hour of your content watched. Um, is that the way it functions, Evelyn? Uh, no, I think that if you don't have an Amazon account, you can still purchase the okay. video. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Evelyn, just to close out, do you, you know, with, with an Amazon, and I hope that there are more Amazons out there in, in, in the aspect that you have a major platform like Amazon that is giving uh, the little guy that much more of a shot versus, you know, your Netflix. Right. Does it, you know, and then of course, you know, the ones that I, I, I harness way more, which are uh, YouTube and Facebook, does that give you more hope an inspiration for for a brighter future oh uh, yeah for sure I mean I think that um, the opportunities endless uh, when it comes to streaming platform um, but yeah I, I I'm very happy I think I, I think I did my homework um, and I I believe that I made a good decision in putting it on that on that on that platform on Amazon perfect well congratulations Evelyn yeah awesome <laughs> So uh, here, let me put up my little marker. We'll close out on that one. Cut.